Good evening and welcome to the Coon Rapids City Council meeting for Tuesday, July 18th, 2023. If you could please rise and join us for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Councilmember Griscoviak. Here. Councilmember Ray Rowe. Here. Councilmember Novak. Here. Councilmember Geisler. Here. Councilmember Armstrong. Here. Councilmember Carlson. Here. Mayor Cook. Here. Thank you. Uh, why don't we adopt this evening's agenda? Motion to adopt the agenda, Mr. Mayor. Second. Motion by Carlson, second by Novak to adopt the agenda. Is there any corrections or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that the agenda is adopted. Um, and brings us right up to item one, and we might as well get right to it. Oaths of our new, for our new police officers. And I think these people are all here for you, Captain Steiner. <laughs> <laughs> make their way in here. All right, I'll try not to block them. But uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, it's my great honor to have the opportunity to introduce our four newest Coon Rapids police officers to the community this evening. Um, before we do that, I just wanted to take uh, a minute to comment on the uniqueness of this group. This group is unique um, to something that I haven't seen in my time here, that they are all four laterals. They were all cops in good standing in other good departments around the metro area, and they chose to come to Coon Rapids PD. In fact, I believe in each case, were the only place they applied, I think. Um, and that's significant, or at least work with me on it. <laughs> uh, that's significant because our industry and our profession is struggling a little bit right now. What used to be hundreds of applicants for a single job is now just a handful. And um, we continue to attract talent from other good agencies, and we lose very little. And I know this is not a coincidence. There's reasons for this. And first and foremost, it, it speaks to the culture that we have here. Um, I know every department thinks they've got great culture, but I know we do here. And it's nothing that I can take credit for, but it's, uh, it's a foundation that was laid decades before I came around here. And uh, it, it, it carries a lot of weight around our profession. Also in Coon Rapids, we take a common sense approach to law enforcement. We still ask our cops to do proactive police work. And uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, whether you know it or not, you're all part of that. As different as this council is from each other and we range on views, um, we always seem to come together in this town on issues of public safety. And that matters. Um, it projects stability and it, it helps build a reputation uh, consistency and stability that makes this place uh, a good place to attract officers and not every city can say that so thank you for your support of our police department now with that I'd like to turn now to introducing in order of seniority our four newest officers I'm gonna step aside a little bit uh, first we have Dan Enstrom Dan grew up in Invergrove Heights he graduated from Simley High School in 2011 then attended Minnesota State University of Mankato and graduated in 2015 before attending Skills and Hibbing. After being a police reserve and an explorer, he was hired as a police officer for the city of Roseville in 2016. In a short time, we'll have Dan's wife, Kelsey, come and pin on badge 192 to him. Next to him is uh, Officer Jacob Hatzenbeller. Jake, uh, Grew up primarily in Blaine, <coughs> went to Spring Lake Park High School, and graduated in 2017. He graduated with his associate's degree uh, from Rasmussen College in 2020 and was hired as a CSO in the city of Maple Grove in 2019, then hired as a police officer there in 2021. His mother, Leslie, will be pinning on badge 193 tonight. Uh, next, we have Officer Georgia Carlson. She grew up in Shoreview, Minnesota, and attended Roseville High School. She graduated in 2016, then went to Century College and graduated from Metro State University with her bachelor's degree in law enforcement in 2020. 
She was a Ramsey County police explorer and a Lino Lake CSO before being hired as a full-time police officer in 2020 with the Lino Lakes Police Department. And last, oh, I'm sorry, her father Mike will be pinning on her badge, number 194 tonight. And uh, last but not least, Officer Drake Malaski, who grew up in Egan, Minnesota. He attended Eastview High School and graduated in 2013. Uh, earned a bachelor's degree from Minnesota State University of Mankato in 2017. He was an Egan Explorer and was selected for the uh, DEA Leadership Academy back when he was in high school. Um, he was hired in 2018 as a Rosemount police officer, and his mother Peg will be pinning his badge on tonight, badge 195. So all four of these officers have been put to the test in our field training program and have successfully completed it, thus earning the right to stand here tonight to get their numbered, uh, uniquely numbered police badge for the city of Coon Rapids. They all came to us knowledgeable police officers, but we made sure they understood the expectations that we have here and doing things the Coon Rapids way in a way that embodies our core values of trust, professionalism, and compassion. And I'm proud to say I believe that they all do. To our new officers, this organization is very proud to have you guys on board. You're about to receive your badges. They're unique to you. We don't recycle badges here. Nobody's ever worn them before, and nobody will ever wear them again. They're entrusted to you by the citizens of Coon Rapids, and they symbolize a mutual commitment that we have for each other. A commitment that you do things always the Coon Rapids way, modeling our core values of trust, professionalism, and compassion. And just as we ask that commitment from you, we believe that requires us to make a commitment as well to you and to your families. We want you to know that we're going to commit to support your career as Coon Rapids Police Department, uh, or Coon Rapids Police Officers. We're going to invest in you with training, equipment, and we're gonna give you the structure and guidance that you need to have a successful long career in law enforcement. We take that commitment very seriously and we ask that you do as well. That's where you right? <laughs> <laughs> So with that, uh, Mr. Mayor, I think we're ready to turn it over to you if you're ready. And I'll have the first officer come. After they get pinned. The first one will get pinned and then I'll swear them in. Okay. Right? That works. All right, we'll have uh, Dan's wife, Kelsey, come up and do the first badge pinning. If you'll step over to the middle here. You probably want a badge. I think this is how we did it last time, though. I'm pretty yeah. sure. All right. Yeah. All right. If you would raise your right hand, I'm going to hold this out, and then I'm going to read these in short little bursts. All right. Sure. It's Enstrom. Yes. All right. Daniel. Yes. I, Daniel Enstrom, do solemnly swear. I, Daniel Enstrom, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Sorry, of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And discharge faithfully. And discharge faithfully. The duties of a police officer. The duties of a police officer. For the city of Coon Rapids. For the city of Coon Rapids. In the county of Anoka. In the county of Anoka. And state of Minnesota. And state of Minnesota. To the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Go ahead.
Hudson Beller? Hudson Beller. All right. Just checking you, make sure you do it. All right. <laughs> I, Jacob Hudson Beller, do solemnly swear. I, Jacob Hudson Beller, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And discharge faithfully. And discharge faithfully. The duties of a police officer. The duties of a police officer. For the city of Coon Rapids. For the city of Coon Rapids. In the county of Anoka. In the county of Anoka. And state of Minnesota. And state of Minnesota. To the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability. Thanks, Jay. Georgia Carlson, do I, solemnly swear. I, Georgia Carlson, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And discharge faithfully. And discharge faithfully. The duties of a police officer. The duties of a police officer. For the city of Coon Rapids. For the city of Coon Rapids. In the county of Anoka. In the county of Anoka. And state of Minnesota. And state of Minnesota. To the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability. Raise your right hand. I, Drake Mulaski, do solemnly swear. I, Drake Mulaski, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And discharge faithfully. And discharge faithfully. The duties of a police officer. The duties of a police officer. For the city of Coon Rapids. For the city of Coon Rapids. In the county of Anoka. In the county of Anoka. And state of Minnesota. And state of Minnesota. To the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability.
Where did Captain Steiner go? How are you going to follow that up? You're just going to leave him hang or what? <laughs> <laughs> Where you told him to oh. stay for the whole council. Oh. <laughs> 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 Didn't you already tell them they should stay for the whole meeting? <laughs> Welcome aboard. We are so thankful that you are here and that you've picked Coon Rapids and we look forward to years and years of having you around and serving in both ways. So anything we can do to support you, come here or go to Captain Steiner. And <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. And you truly are all welcome to stay. It shouldn't be a fairly <laughs> short meeting. Or you can go out to the hallway for pictures, you know. This is, this is when we always see if anybody will be left. <laughs> yeah, I got a few. We'll just give them a moment to clear the room. fun. We have two items on our consent agenda. The first one, yeah, oh yes, what am I doing? Oh, should we just skip over that? <laughs> um, we should probably approve the minutes from our last meeting. Thank you, Councilmember Geisler. Mr. Mayor, I'll motion to approve the minutes from July 5th. Second. Motion by Geisler and a second by Ray Rauer. Is there any discussion or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And the minutes are approved. And then we have two items on our consent agenda. First is item three, to accept an easement agreement for the Tronson Creek townhomes. At its regular meeting, July 21st, the Planning Commission approved final plans for the Tronson Reserve Apartments. The project consists of a 31-unit townhome development, a 25-foot wide drainage and utility easement along the south and east portions of the proposed development is necessary to allow for the continued conveyance of public drainage and maintenance access to an existing public ditch that flows along this area. So we're looking to accept the attached drainage and utility easement agreement with Tronson Creek LLC for the development of the Tronson Reserve apartment project. And then the second and last item on our consent agenda, which is item four, is to adopt resolution 23-77, establishing the city manager's salary. It's a summary of our closed meeting from the last, from our la from our, <laughs> our closed workshop. Um, the, uh, on July 5th, the city council held a closed meeting pursuant to Minnesota statutes for the purpose of conducting the city manager's performance review. In attendance at this closed meeting were Mayor Cook, all council members, and city manager Matt Stemwettel. During the closed meeting, the city council discussed the city manager's mm -hmm. job performance during the previous year, and the city council also discussed the terms of the city manager's employment agreement. Upon conclusion of the performance review and the compensation discussion, the city council was agreeable to adjusting city manager Matt Stemwittle's base salary. The attached resolution establishes the city manager's annual base salary at grade X, step eight, which is $196,892 annually, within the city's 2023 compensation plan, retroactively effective to June 17, 2023. The city council was further agreeable to adjusting the city manager's vehicle allowance to $500 per month on this, as this allowance had remained at $400 per month since he started in the city manager role in 2015. All other compensation, all the, I'm sorry, all other components of Mr. Stemwell's compensation and, and employment contract will remain unchanged. So we're looking to adopt resolution 23-77, a resolution establishing the city manager's salary. And that's our complete consent agenda. Your Honor. Councilmember Ray Rauer. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Ray Rauer and a second by Novak. Is there any discussion or questions? All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Um, opposed? <clears throat> and that motion carries. We're all good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 
Item five on our agenda under old business is to consider adoption of ordinances 2284 and 2285. This is planning case 23-12 regarding home occupations, city codes section 11-304 and 11-1210. This was introduced at our last meeting. Does anybody have any questions or need any follow-up on this before we take action? All right. Um, Your Honor. Councilmember Ray Rower. For planning case 23-12, I make a motion to adopt ordinance 2284, amending city code section 11-304. Adopt ordinance 2285, adding city code section 11-1210, and authorize summary publication of ordinances. Second. Motion by Ray Rower and a second by Carlson. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Item six is uh, planning case 23-13. Consider adoption of ordinance 2286, temporary signs and wall signs, city code sections 11-1203.6 and 11-1203.7. Again, this was presented in, in detail at our last council meeting and uh, when it was introduced. And does anybody have any questions on this or does they want to just move ahead? Mr. Mayor. Council Member Carlson. Make a motion to adopt ordinance 2286, amending city code sections 11 1203.6 and 11 1203.7 and authorize summary publication. Second. Motion by Carlson, a second by Armstrong. Is there a discussion on this? Mr. Mayor. Council Member Griscoviak. really don't have any discussion other than to say that we don't take, you know, amending city code lightly. These things came before us in, in work session, then they were introduced, and we had a lively discussion on it all, and it all makes sense, so I support these changes. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Um, yeah, if you have any more questions about either of those, you'll want to just watch the city council comments. I'm sure Com Council Member Carlson is going to cover those in great detail. <laughs> I'm very excited, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> All right, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Item 7 on our agenda this evening is to consider a joint powers agreement and budget amendment resolution 23-76 regarding traffic signal and intersection improvements at Xava Street and Coon Rapids Boulevard, Project 23-14. Um, Mr. Hammer, do you want me to read this or do you want to give us just a highlight on it? Mr. Mayor, I can hit the highlights for you. It is a budget amendment as well as a joint powers agreement with Anoka County. It's a signal replacement at Zavis Street and Coon Rapids Boulevard, but it also includes some ADA enhancements at Direct River Drive just uh, a little ways up the, up the road. Uh, we had some interactions with a visually impaired person. Uh, we were able to satisfy some of those requirements and it just took a little while to get the funds, get the project. So most of this money city related is um, state aid el eligible, but there is a portion that would not be that and that's what the budget amendment is for out of the revolving construction fund. So I'm happy to answer any questions anyone may have. So, so Mr. Hammer, the ADA improvements at Direct River, Dot, Direct River Drive, is that to the existing trail adding those little ramps or something? Or? Correct. We're going to extend those out a little bit to give a little more refuge and put the truncated domes, the, the little dimples there um, for the sensory portion of it. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Geisler. I'll make a motion to approve the execution of the Joint Powers Agreement and Associated Budget Amendment to the Resolving Construction Fund with Anoka County to re reconstruct the traffic signal and perform pedestrian ADA improvements at County State 8 Highway 1 which is Coon Rapids Boulevard and Xava Street, as well as Coon Rapids Boulevard Service Road and Direct River Drive intersections. Second. Motion by Geisler and a second by Novak. Is there any further discussion on this? Mr. Mayor. House Member Griscoviak. Um, I'm in agreement. I mean, I like what the city and the county has done to prepare for this uh, upgrade to this intersection. I just had a question, and I asked this question, I think, last time, about the cost share with the county. So it's a 50-50 cost share, um, which seems like the city is paying a little bit too much because it's a county road, right? So I did some checking, and I'm just wondering if we could have a discussion maybe with, uh, 
Anoka County on this in the future, but the policy is 50-50 right now. I'm looking at other cities, other counties, that actually the county pays 100% of a county road uh, signalization intersection. There are other counties that uh, do it by a cost share by the number of legs. So in this case, there's eight lanes of county road and four lanes of city road. So it's really not a 50-50 thing. There's much more traffic on the county road than there would be on our Xavius, which is a city street. And I'm just wondering is, you know, have we looked at that, that when there's a, a major intersection like this and we're picking up half the cost, or I think we maybe should only be picking up 25%. Is there something that we can get in front of the Yanoka County Board to look at that policy, or what would we do to look at that? Yes, Councilmember Skowiak, thank you. It's something I've, uh, some, some questions I've had all along, and actually this is uh, different than what it was when I started here. So uh, Exhibit C to the agreement, it's in every JPA that's there. That is their standard cost share that, right. that exists. So um, we pay by the legs of the intersection and not the lanes of the intersection. Mm. So Zavis is a city street, Coon Rapids Boulevard is a county road. So therefore we pay for our two adjoining segments, they pay for their two adjoining segments. When I first started, it was, we paid for all of ours and half of theirs. And so this revision was just done probably about two, three years ago where they felt that anything new should be, we get ours, you get yours, but then it came down to maintenance, they felt that there should be a, more, a higher share going to the cities, which uh, that has since been changed. So I can certainly take this back and talk to uh, the highway department, maybe it goes before the transportation committee, but I can tell you this was recently changed along with the type of curb that goes in, sidewalks. I mean, there's a lot of um, costs with this that are more borne by the county than there are for the city. The city's more on the, the lighting, the uh, pedestrian ways, and the county's more of the hard surface and hardscape. I, I understand your question and it's interesting uh, that you think about it by lanes and the volume of traffic you're moving versus just the legs of the intersection. So 50-50 is what we got not long ago. We used to be paying 70% you know, of these projects prior to that. But I will bring that up with them and see where it, see where it goes. And as a follow-up, is there any other cost that the county is paying on this other than what's in the packet? It looks like we're splitting 773 or so between the two uh, uh, government agencies. Yeah, that's it. This, that's why it's so expensive for us on this one compared to some of our okay. past ones that there's no federal funding. This was mm. just a straight up intersection improvement by the locals. And that's a typical, sorry, oh, on all these questions, going. but that's typical to use MSA funds in a situation like this? Yeah, Zava Street for us is a state aid road, it so it would be eligible to do gotcha. so. Um, historically, the cost hadn't been that high that maybe we would just use the revolving construction fund and try to save mm. some of those dollars for either roadway maintenance or right. other larger projects. But on this one, the cost being higher, we haven't really done any MSA roads for a while. We've been building up that fund. Um, so we felt it would be appropriate to cover those costs primarily out of this. And, and some of those over at Direct River just were not eligible um, based upon location and they weren't tied to that intersection. That's why they were ineligible. We could have gone and, and requested that and made our argument and maybe made them state aid eligible, but it would have added time and um, dollars just to get to that point. So we figured doing a, a budget amendment for that 69,000 and there was a good balance in the revolving construction fund that we thought this would be a better approach. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. I like that way of thinking. That was interesting. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And, come on, there we go. Let me dismantle everything over here, all right. Um, we are up to our open mic public comment portion of the meeting. Uh, if anybody is here for open mic, open mic provides an opportunity for the public to address the city council on subjects that are not part of the regular meeting agenda. The public is invited to express any concerns they may have, which are relevant to the affairs, policies, or practices of the city of Coon Rapids. Remarks will be limited to three minutes. Should you wish to participate in open mic, please approach the podium and state your name and address before addressing the council. 
All remarks will be made from the podium and addressed to the council as a whole. Open mic is not a time for problem solving or reacting to the comments made, but for hearing the speaker for informational purposes only. Questions from council will be for clarification only, and if necessary, a staff report will be prepared for the next regular council meeting with a copy forwarded to the speaker. So, anybody here for open mic? Good afternoon, uh, Mayor and Council Members. Um, my name is Zach Arco. I'm actually a resident of Blaine. My address is 12041 Madison Street Northeast. Um, I'm here because I do have business in Coon Rapids. So this year there is an election there for the Anoka Hennepin School Board. And because this is an off-cycle election, so it's not a presidential, it's not a midterm, um, state and federal laws pertaining to things like putting up yard signs don't actually apply in the off-cycle election, so it kind of falls to like local counties and cities. So there's kind of a, a weird conundrum that's come up because in a typical election year, oh, and I should also state I'm, I'm gonna be running for the Anoka Hennepin School Board for District 2, which has uh, Ward 2 Precinct 2 and Coon Rapids in it. Um, so as it stands right now, I believe the city ordinance from Coon Rapids allows for yard signs to be put up, uh, I believe it's like 45 or 46 days before the general election, which actually falls on like, I believe it's the first day that early voting begins. So it's a, in a normal election year, that doesn't really happen because there's primaries, so you can put your signs up in advance of the primary, so that problem is kind of averted. I think this is just a weird technicality do, that really I don't think anyone thought of, because I mean, you've all ran for office, you understand probably the value of yard signs, and the key is you want to put them up before the election begins, <laughs> not once the election has started. So what I would ask of you guys, and I've, I've actually gone before the Blaine City Council at the same request because they have the same kind of weird technicality, I would ask that you would just modify the ordinance to allow yard signs to be put up in advance of the election to throw out a number, I don't know, 45 days or whatever seems best for you guys, but just something that's before September 22nd would be what I request. So, and I think my campaign manager is looking into this. I believe Andover has addressed this problem by allowing pretty much what I'm asking for, just like yard signs to be put up in advance of early voting. So that might be a model to follow after, but whatever the case, there's my, uh, there's my question and request for you guys. I have a little letter, should I give it to the? Uh, you, you can, I'm, 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 okay. pretty sure, I'm pretty sure we've already presented the information from your campaign manager and <laughs> they're already <laughs> discussing it. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> See, I, I didn't know like how far along the process it was, so I forgot to pay a visit and just yeah. kind of make you, does that? Do you think that's who it is? I'm not sure. We got the email anyway. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you very you. much. Yeah. All right. Anybody else here for council comments? All right. Or, I'm sorry. Open mic. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Uh, quick question. I I'm the guy that have con has contacted. I think a few of you about a group home. My name's John Marosla. Reside at two zero two eight one twenty third Avenue. Coon Rapids. Um, I've tried to get on the agenda, don't know how to get onto it, but I'd l like and ask if I can have more than three minutes of your time, because I, th I think it's worthy and my wife will cede my time. Other members who could participate would also cede their time. Well, how much do you need, John? Maybe five minutes? Sure, you can go five minutes. All right. Um, not a public, <coughs> not a public speaker. But anyways, take your uh, time. You're fine. Just relax. So I've been a 28 year resident, Coon Rapids, in my current place, 26 years. First 23 years, fantastic, great neighborhood, great people. Um, unbeknownst to us, our neighbor who had been our neighbor for 10 years, you know, did a lot of help for him and stuff like that. Up and moved, didn't inform us, and changed the resident next door to a group home. It's her first initial, I guess, venture into businesses. And so she's been operating group homes for three years. She now has three in Coon Rapids. And basically since that time, our, our neighbors, Mark, Alicia, we, we've essentially been held hostage, tormented by just various acts of aggression. I don't know how many of you would tolerate your children listening to 
people swearing, M effer, literally 100 times over the last three years and such. Um, it's not getting any better. The, I'll try and speed it up. Um, this owner has the three places in Coon Rapids. Each one in the last two and a half years has had between 20 and 27 police reported activities. That's each one. Our, ours in particular were at 27. Um, it's not getting better. Since the first of this year, we have had 11 police responses, not including the last two, which were medical emergencies last night and the night before, where your police officers, fire response, ambulance shows up, but those look like you know legitimate medical um, problems. But the, the things we've witnessed, we've witnessed domestic abuse, endless, you know, depending on the rotation of the patients, endless amounts of the smell of marijuana. Um, it's going to be legal here coming up, but hasn't been in the past few years. We have brought the concern up to the owner, and specifically, if, if you need a reference, it's We Care Home Health Services, LLC, run by Matilda Apiang. I'm not sure if I have the last name spelled correctly, but we brought the concerns up and her response is, well, they have weed cards and there's nothing really I can do. Um, the neighbors enough, you know, find it suspicious that cars pull up in the middle of the night, someone runs out from the house and they run back and the car drives off. So it, it, it seems odd that it's a, totally a, an issue with weed cards, being that they like to smoke in the second story and blow it out the bathroom window. Um, Let's see, we had an, I got a video if you want to see a guy screaming, kill you as loud as he can at midnight on, I think it was March 12th. 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Like you, do, you want, do you want the video? Do you want to listen to it? Can we, can we play it or no? Or it, no, I, we're not set up to play it. Yeah. No. I mean, I can play on my phone. And, yeah. yeah. You, can, you, can, you can email it to us as an attachment if you'd like. Yeah. Um, we witnessed in... On May 16th, I'm outside and spraying weeds in my yard, very loud resident, the one that probably generates 80% of the complaints, yelling and screaming at a taxi driver because because he showed up the wrong time to bring him to the hospital or to the pharmacy to pick up his meds. Nothing different than that, so I turn my back. Guy walks up and goes boom, 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 hard as he can, dent still in the garage door, pounded in a section of the Small garage door in the house still there. Two days later, well, I had never te texted Matilda before. My wife has, and for the most part, she's been unresponsive. Just for the record, we have contacted, neighbors have contacted her many times, and it's more of a, I'll note it, but no response taken. So I said, all right, well, I'll text her. So I text her and said, in case you're wondering about the property damage on your garage door, I said, you, one of your residents decided after arguing with the taxi driver, it was in his best interest to pound the dent in into the garage. Simple enough. Two days later, this guy's been there two years, never approached me, never talked to me. My wife, my son, my neighbor were in the garage, in the driveway, our driveway, work, I'm working on the boat, and here comes this resident, violent. He's been yelling and screaming, swearing at people, tormenting the people that he also works with, or lives with in the group home. So all of a sudden we look up, here he comes across my front yard, smoking one hand, drinking the other. He's under the influence, clearly, because evidently as an at-will group home, you might be medicated, you might be surrounded with patients and other residents that have drug, alcohol dependency issues. It's up to their, it's their decision if they want to drink alcohol. Guy comes up, he's half cocked, walks up and goes, who owns the house? Wife goes like that, no, not you. No, the one that filed the complaint. All right, comes up to me and he wanted to apologize, which I thought was, you know, that's nice, considering he was drunk. Then he proceeds, to, he, he commends me on my text, my grammar and punctuation on my text to the owner that she evidently sent to him was commendable. So he can basically seek me out. 
Uh, there's been other instance, instances this has happened. I, I apologize. I, I know I, I'm assuming I'm way over five minutes. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> can I continue? Or? No, but this is very important. Um, okay. So, I mean, are you, are you close to wrapping up? Because I think we've got the, I think we understand. You got the gist. I'll, I just want to finish up just a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I, I think I mentioned there have been, it's been getting mm. worse, not better since she's opened. Um, you know, it, it escalated to June 20th. Neighbor bringing up her garbage from the street, had no prior communication, contact. A new resident, so they got rid of the, the one that you know, came up and approached me, put in, brought in a new resident. This, this gentleman proceeds to go up their driveway and threaten to kill her multiple times. Proceeds to end up back down at the group home. I, did you get the video? Any chance you shared it with them? Because I can certainly share it to you. And there's two and a half minutes. Share with us? I shared it with the mayor and some yeah. others. Yes, two and a half minutes of a guy standing on his, okay, with all the obscenities. But, so the, I guess that's the worst of the worst. Uh, one other incident I would like to bring up is that on Memorial Day, and uh, I guess a vulnerable adult, she's, she's been at the facility for a while, broke open second story window and was screaming and yelling incoherently on the garage roof. And the other gentleman with the video was on the garage roof. So now twice within the last six weeks, you got vulnerable adults, mental health patients on garage roofs. It's not a far fall for particularly the older lady. She's probably 50 to 60, very feeble, very slow moving. Um, I don't know. I, I guess my last comment would be I have, I have filed five reports with the DHS. Their utter disregard for mental health community is absolutely appalling. <coughs> I've talked to them on the phone, and they, they don't care. They don't care if they abuse each other, if there's domestic abuse. Um, the only thing that seemed to perk their interest a little bit was I said, it, so it doesn't concern you that people Vulnerable adults are on the second story, climbing up on the garage roofs, walking around, screaming incoherently, threatening to kill people, coming up in my driveway, violent people. They'd, well, there's rules and regulations, and that's all they would say. What the, their, their mistreatment or lack of response to the mental health community, it's absolutely appalling. And, and my final thought is this is not a condemnation at all on group homes and the services they provide. This is the specific owner of, the, of this group home because she's basically pillaging this community. I, I have not talked to the other two facilities, but I'm assuming their experiences around the, these facilities are the same as ours, judging by the amount of the police reports. And then my next guest I would like to call up is Rich, who, 16-year resident, um, actually was forced to leave the city of Coon Rapids. And I'd like, to hear, I'd like for you to hear their story. Hi. And thank you very much. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Rich and Mindy Rektarczyk. We lived on 12255 Osage Street. Mr. Mayor, Brad, I actually mailed both of you um, about a year and a half, two years ago because it was bad for us. Um, we were threatened. I the children were threatened and sworn at. If we weren't in the backyard, they felt the need to come to the fence and speak to them and say not so nice things where they'd be running screaming for us. So they were too afraid to even play on their own. Do you have children? Trampoline. Children here? How would you feel if your eight-year-old daughter was running up, afraid to use her backyard? How would that make you feel? I called the cops numerous times. I was told there's nothing you guys can do. Just keep calling the cops. Just keep calling the cops. But even the owners were disrespectful to us. If we, we did call the We Care and talk to them and they had the nerve to yell at us and scream at us, they've come to the fence and yelled at us for complaining and telling us it was our fault that they yell at the, at our kids and at us. That they have a right yeah, to be they, in this neighborhood. And they and have behave. the right to behave that way. So, so they said it was acceptable behavior and our children were out of line for playing in the backyard. So ultimately, we had enough of it. 
And I think it was um, a sergeant from Coon Rapids the last time I spoke to him, he told me you got two options. You keep calling the cops or you move. I moved. We actually turned down an offer that was $20,000 higher on our home because they had children. So we sold it to a single gentleman because why should they go through what we went through? Yes. So that's the type of community you had, but because of this group home and what these people are experiencing right now, this is what you have currently. Now we're residents of Andover, and absolutely love it. We ended up moving out of that home July 1st without even a home to move into yet. Homeless for nine weeks because we had to get out of there that quickly. Mm -hmm. So that's what your city is turning into. And I know that home, all the police know who it is. We saw drug deals on the corner. We saw all this. A person died, OD'd directly behind us. Found him with a needle in his arm. That's the type of home this is. So fortunately for my family, we no longer, thank God, have to put up with this. But for these people right here, it's your responsibility to take care of this. Otherwise, come to Andover. It's great. It is. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and we'll prepare something for you. Um, and it's, it's not an indictment on all group, group homes. I think we have 250 group homes in our community. I thought was what the census was. Um, and most of them, you're not even aware of. The one in my neighborhood, we know it's a group home, but it's just, it's just another home. Oh, I'm sorry. Was I'm sorry. Was there anybody else that wanted to address? The gentleman there did. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry. Yeah, and then if and, if, and then. I just have one question. Yeah, but yeah. we'd have to have you from the ambulance. Good evening. Yes, sir. Uh, I've been a Coon Rapids resident for 25 years. I live at 2023 123rd Avenue Northwest, right across the street from this group home. Um, yeah. And I know you don't want to. I can't play any videos, but I have several videos. Sure. And what was your name, sir? I'm sorry. Mark Swedeen. Mark Swedeen. Swedeen, yep. Okay. Um, also one that you guys didn't mention, uh, the uh, one of the residents from the group home walking around in his underwear and a tank top through the neighborhoods. Uh, he did get called on. He did get picked up. But uh, my wife takes care of our grandkids and... With everything that goes on there, they're in the backyard. I mean, we got new power wheels for these kids, and there's just no way. I mean, we live on a cul-de-sac because it's a cul-de-sac. Mm -hmm. Nothing but the backyard. We put a six-foot privacy fence up <laughs> because we don't want our grandkids, three and five, to, you know, it's just... He's spot on. It's it's nuts. It's bad. Yeah. I, lots of videos if you want to see them. A lot of traffic at night. Hmm. People stopping, coming and going within minutes. People running from the back and coming up to the front, grabbing something out of a car, running in the back. I'm the one that called 911 for the guy that was yelling stuff at midnight. Uh, and it went on for 10 minutes. I called 911. The 911 operator said, I can hear him. Yep. I said, I just need someone to go over there and do a welfare check. I don't know if, you know, God forbid something, you know. But that's what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is anybody else for council comments? I'm sorry. Oh, I did it again. Yeah, sorry. Open, Open mic. mic. Open mic. Oh, yeah. Can I just ask? Do I have to ask a question? We can come up for an answer, ask, ask a question, and then, <laughs> sure. Yeah. So name, name an address so if you want yep, to get an answer. Yep. Deb yeah. Morosla, and we're at 2028 123rd Avenue, Coon Rapids. Um, I just have one question, and it, again, it's not anything about group homes, but again, we've been living there for so long and had no idea. And I had said to Matilda, I wish she would have told us, you know, we would have had that um, 
option to leave or stay or whatever. But looking at your rules, there are no rules unless there's, I think, seven or more people moving in. You can just start a group home. But if you're a resident and you want four dogs, you have to get the okay. Why, why is that? It used to be three dogs because my neighbor needed therapy dogs and I got a letter in the mail asking me if it was okay if he had three dogs. And I was like, well, of course, you know, he can have three dogs, but now it's four dogs. It makes no sense, you know? It's kind of a disservice to the community. Okay. Oh. Just something to think about, food for thought, right? Mm -hmm. Anybody else here for open mic this evening? Okay. Um, the staff will create a response. And thank you for coming. I, I mean, we can feel your frustration. I mean, I, I, I understand. And I really understand the, the frustration dealing with DHS because we dealt with them on a house in town here, several trips down there, several state reps, state senators involved, and he was talking to a wall. Um, so if it's just this one particular owner that's a problem, maybe there is something we can do. I don't, I don't know, but staff will look into it and thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for sharing your experience and I'm just feel terrible about it. But so you're saying there's hope. <laughs> there's always hope. I don't know if it, if it involves DHS, I'm not saying there's hope. <laughs> we appreciate yeah. this. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, well, that's our job. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. Uh, if there's nobody else here for open mic, we'll close that portion of the meeting. And we're up to, uh, I don't have any reports from previous open mics, so we're up to other business. Um, Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Geisler. Um, and maybe I'll punt over to Captain Steiner in a second. Um, but Night to Unite is coming up in a couple of weeks. The registration deadline for parties, if you want to have um, an event and get on the list and have the police show up or the fire department show up. Um, that deadline is July 24th. Um, so the event is on Tuesday, August 1st. And so Captain Steiner, if there's anything you want to add to what fun people can have during Night to Unite. Sure. Um, it is fast approaching. There is a deadline, although we encourage you to, you know, we'll try to, uh, We'll try to accommodate everybody we can. It gets to be a very busy night. The numbers are good. Um, they're creeping up slowly, and the stragglers are, are, are making their requests. And like I said, um, we plan on honoring every one of them. So uh, it's a great opportunity to get a police officer, firefighters. Some of the, I know the council will be out there and mayor. Uh, it's a great opportunity to ask questions, to get to know your neighbors, and to to just have a positive experience in your neighborhood and enjoy some time together. We, we look forward to it every year. Um, we've got a really big response and we get to all the parties as, as best we can. So encourage you to do it if you haven't done it. And uh, we see a lot of the same parties every year and it's great every year. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Councilmember Novak. Uh, my wife and I have lived in a cul-de-sac for about 19 years here in Twin Rapids. And let me tell you, night to unite, works really good at a cul-de-sac. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then, right. Mr. Mayor? Yep. The other one, um, and it's a little closer, on Thursday, so just a couple of days away, is um, another concert in the park. That is the Naked Cowboys. So it's a country band. And my hope is that they, <laughs> it's just the name. <laughs> <laughs> And not that whole New York guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Group of them. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and the uh, the Thursday night concerts down in the in the Coon, the Coon Rapids Dam. Uh, they've got the food from the North Star Lions. You've yeah. got the Boy Scout troops selling popcorn and beverages and candy, and it's just a really nice event to grab your lawn chair and uh, go out and have a nice evening. Other business. Uh, farmers markets going Wednesday afternoons. Is it three to six? Yes, it is. I think it's on three that to six. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that'll just continue to build through the rest of the year. Somebody's down there with jams and baked goods. And honey. Honey. Oh, I thought you were just talking to me. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> sure, would be jealous. All right. 
Any other any other business, Mr. Stemwell? You look like you're ready to go with something. Mayor Council, I was just going to uh, mention we had a very successful summer in the city meeting series this summer. Mm -hmm. we wrapped up last Tuesday at Boulevard Plaza. A little bit of rain interference came through, but actually we had a pretty good attendance. I thought, given what looked like worse weather than it turned out to be, but. Yep. Uh, we had great attendance <clears throat> at the previous two. I think really it was kind of a record year from that perspective and wanted to thank all the staff. There's a lot of hours that go into being there and, uh, and talking to residents and it's a really great opportunity for interaction and sort of learning on a number of phases of both municipal government. There's other agencies that show up too like the U of M extension and um, things like that. So we're gonna do it again next year I imagine. We don't have any particular plans other than it's usually the second and fourth Tuesday in June, the first Tuesday in or the second Tuesday in July and it'll be a pretty similar format but we'll switch up the parks and do it all over again excellent yeah I think we were up over 200 pieces of ice cream at the last yes week. Uh, <laughs> the last ice cream budget we blew right through that this <laughs> <time>. <laughs> all right, right. and then uh, yes just, just, just a quick comment if the night unite organizers are handing out the little Rocky magnets and the Rocky mm -hmm. stickers. My granddaughter confiscated mine. Oh, <laughs> I, don't have I might be able to get you one before you leave. <laughs> council Member Armstrong. Um, yeah, and then just a reminder, our next council meeting, because of Night to Unite yes. being Tuesday night, our next council meeting will be the first Wednesday of August. Correct. Um, when is the, um, they used to, and I don't even know what the group is, it used to be Transformative Circle. Mm -hmm. Now, they're organized a community event for Night to Unite. Um, it, last year it was on the Monday night, but it seems like, is it, is it, is it a different day this year? Council Member Ray Rower may have some information on that. Neighbor, but yes. I am on vacation that week okay. with the nephew's <laughs> wedding, so, so unfortunately don't, I don't. So you don't know what it is? Yeah. Not All right, off okay. the top of The Coon Rapids head. women of today are sort of spearheading that mm -hmm. this year, is that correct, Council Member Ray Rower? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And they mentioned that when they were here. Yes. Because we declared July 1st as their day in town. Mm -hmm. um, oh, all right. I found it. Well, okay, very good. It's got lots of sponsorships, it's got lots of dances. Mm -hmm. Captain Steiner? I've got the it. The Love My Neighbor is on the, if the 5th is a Saturday, yes. it's, that, it's that night. Uh, Saturday the what? I think it's the 5th. Yeah, I just found it. So it is Saturday, August 5th, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. at the Coon Rapids. Coon Rapids Soccer Complex. Join oh, so us for food, music, dancing, performances, storytelling, and fun. So it's after night to night this year then. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Saturday, August 5th, all right. Okay, any other business to come before council? Move to adjourn. Second. second. Motion by Geisler, second by Novak. Oh. To adjourn, all in favor <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned. <laughs>